transcription behind the scenes of the police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Just remember him when you see him again, Jeffy. Oh, yeah. Sure, Lieutenant. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call off the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him help. Now, the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, move up to the end of the stage, right over here. That's it, boys, keep it moving. Now turn all of you and face the screen. That's right, look straight ahead. Keep your hands at your sides. When I ask you questions, talk up. It's a long way to the back of the room. People out there want to hear you, so sing out. All right, number one, Jack Withers, open charge. Step right up there, Jack. Right up to the line. That's it. Where do you live, Jack? Troy Street. Where on Troy Street? Some flop, huh? I don't know the number. How long you lived there? Two days. Where'd you live before that? Phoenix. That's in Arizona. I know where it is. How long did you live in Phoenix, Jack? All my life. And how come you're wanted in Philadelphia? I ain't wanted no place. That's not what this says. Wanted James J. Winternitz, alias Tom Winters, alias Jack Winters, alias Wynn Jackson, for questioning suspicion of robbery, armed assault, attempted homicide. Sounds like they want you real bad in Philly, Jack. I ain't wanted no place. All right, slide down. You guys gonna send me back to Philly? What are you think? I ain't going. You hey, run down, 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 Jack. You ain't sending me back to no bunker. These guys are crazy. It's gonna get fucked up, Jack. I ain't shutting up for no lousy copper. Not for you, I ain't. Just shut up. Kramer, guys. That's your line on a bunch of lousy spray. them away. You ain't taking nobody lousy talk. You ain't taking away with this. You get it on you. I'll give it to you right. All your lousy dirty. All right, number two, Haven McIver, drunk in this piece. Step right up there, Haven. That's right. Where do you live? Well, I, uh, I wasn't disturbing any peace, Sergeant. Not me. Answer the question, Haven. Where do you live? Well, that's such a... Uh, I did live at the 8250 in Humphrey Court. What do you mean you didn't live there? Well, I don't know if I have a place to live. No, no, uh, not after last night. <laughs> How long did you live there? Well, almost 15 years, Sergeant. I, I would have had the place paid for it, too, if they, they hadn't socked me with an assessment for a new sewers. <laughs> and that kind of put me in a hole. <laughs> uh, what kind of work do you do, Adam? Well, I guess you call me a bookkeeper, Sergeant. Uh, can't you tell you what my wife calls me, though? <laughs> you weren't as funny as that last night. Well, I was Your neighbors didn't think so. Oh, well, gosh, I don't know why they got so sore at me, son. Maybe it was those bagpipes you were playing. Well, why should I want to get sore? Not to do music. You were playing them in the middle of the street, Haven, at two in the morning. I was? That's right. Well, imagine that. Two in the morning. And it was only eight o'clock when I started to play in the Rickers bar. No time surely does fly in those bars, my daughter, Sergeant. All right, Haven. Move on down. Number three, Turk Weimar, possession of deadly weapons. Step right up there, Turk. Where do you live? Talk up, Turk. Where'd you sleep last? Well, I'm not coming to you. I'm drinking. What were you doing on Maple Street at 11.30 last night, Turk? Going to a movie. At 11.30? Well, I'm so proud of the to get better feet. Arresting officers found a number of deadly weapons in your possession, Turk. What kind of weapon? One 12-inch length of lead pipe, pair of brass knuckles, one leather-covered blackjack, 
two guns, a 32 Colt, the 38 Smith and Wesson. So do I. You need all that to go to a movie? Sure, I need to go to see Hans Christian Anderson. What's that got to do with it? Well, him fairy tales always scare me. <laughs> Any questions or identifications out there in the audience room? How about it, Chairman? Ah, uh, you got a bunch of ducks and tea heads up there tonight, Lieutenant. The guy you're out there's a real. No questions, Sergeant. <laughs> Nothing. And he should know who bumped off Boots Krakow. Who thinks they brought a man in from out of town? When he saw him once, doesn't know his name. Not much help. No. Did Jaffe say anything else? The word around town is that the Eastern boys are trying to move in. Boots Krakow was one of their boys. And he could have moved in early. Tried to take over for himself. I mm, guess. You think they're going to set up headquarters in Hanford again? Well, stands to reason. Unincorporated territory outside the city limits. You've got no jurisdiction. Yeah. Trouble is, they don't open their handbooks and their policy wheels in Hanford. We ran them out of town once. We can do it again. Lieutenant Guthrie. Waldo, Van. Oh, yeah, Bill. Any luck on the boots crack off killing? No, not so far. You think it's a syndicate job? It's only earmarks. Who do you think might have ordered it? Uh, two possibilities. Al Franchetti in Chicago and... Do the back in New York. Mm-hmm. Well, flight 305 from the East lands at the airport at 10.15, Ben. I think you better meet it. Why is that? Got a teletype from Chicago. There's a passenger aboard with the name of Alfred Frank. They think it might be Franchetti. Sure do that, huh? Chetty and Davis, big little boys. Yeah, sure. There's a log, man. 
He's carrying this around, too. Got a permit to carry that gun, Davis? They got one. Let's see it. In the wallet. Uh-huh. You're being pretty high-handed about all this, aren't you, Lieutenant? Yeah. You know, I got some influential friends in this state. Maybe they won't like the way you handle visitors here. Too bad. And this is the only permit you got, Davis? How many do I need for one gun? More than this. Issued in Chicago. So good here. Look, you're not worried about Lou's gun, Lieutenant. How about getting to the point, huh? I've already made it. That plane for Chicago leaves in five minutes. There's your wallet. Why don't you mail it to me, Lieutenant? Say to room 511 at the Stratford Hotel here in town. Yeah, sure. Mail me the wallet and the uh, 10,000 bucks that's in it. I thought it was closer to 12. Well, I'll be happy if I get 10 back. Pick it up. Anything you say. You too, Davis. Yeah. I leave the gun. That rod sent me back 75 bucks. I'll leave it. Look, Lieutenant, be reasonable. Why should we fly back to Chicago just like that? You can't make that phony vagrancy rap stick. It'll give us time enough to dig up something else. Well, like what? Suspicion of homicide? You got holes in your head, copper? No, but Boots Krakow has. What's the connection between Krakow and me? Your question. Like to answer it? You can't pin no bum beef like that on us. You'll spend a lot of time in the tank while we're trying. Well, Franchetti? <laughs> we take the plane. with Franchetti last week didn't take them. You back in town? Same thing. Only we can't touch him. He's in Hanford. Who took you? One of the boys used to handle a policy wheel for him. Said Lou Davis told him to start operating again. Oh, I guess it's figured. So where do we go from there? Find out who killed Boots Krakow. Been trying for two weeks, Ben. Haven't got a lead. Well, it's the only way we'll get to Franchetti. It's a pretty long shot. Michelson at the Attorney General's office is going to help. If Franchetti hasn't got him on the payroll. Oh, uh, not Michelson. He's put a couple of men in Hanford. Maybe they can dig up something there. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Ten Guthrie. Say, Lieutenant, this is Hank Jaffe. Remember? Now, what's on your mind, Jaffe? Well, the guy from the sticks you wanted. The operator who maybe dumped Boots crack off. I think I got him spotted for you. Where is he? Well, like I told you, I only seen him once, but this monkey sure looked like him. Where is he, Jaffe? I want to get racked up for this, Lieutenant. I'm walking a slow road right now. You won't get into any trouble, Jaffe. Just tell me where he is. Well, he's at the Poodle Bar in the Stratford Hotel. I'm pretty talky with a guy named Lou Davis. The time, October 30th, 1944. The place, a battlefield near St. Jacques, France. The infantry had lost 55 of its 88 men in an attack on a strongly entrenched company of crack mountain troops. Private Reuben Ross took action to protect the remainder of his unit. With his light machine gun, he moved to a forward position to absorb the first impact of a counterattack. As machine gun and small arms fire struck the ground around him, Ross fired with deadly accuracy and turned back the assaulting force. Six more times the elite mountain troops attacked Ross's position, and six times he repelled their assault. Now, most of the supporting American riflemen were out of ammunition. During an eighth assault, Ross carried on almost alone, turning back the enemy who had crawled to within four yards of his position. When his last rounds were gone, Ross and the eight surviving riflemen were advised to pull back to the company command post. But more ammunition was expected, so they held their positions. As the nine men stood with fixed bayonets against a final all-out attack, ammunition at last was brought to Private Ross. He opened fire at once, killing 40 of the attackers and wounding 10 more. The assault was broken. For his actions during the five-hour battle, Wilbur Ross received the Medal of Honor. The citation called his deeds an inspiration to his comrades in the high tradition of military service. Wilburn Ross, who asked not what his country could do for him, but what he could do for his country. Thank you. 
that man. Yeah. Who Davis, all right. Never saw the other guy. No? And Jeff, he said he was from out of town. Young, sharp. Might be a college man. Mm, doing a different type of wood these days. Yeah. Davis calling for his check. We take him both. If they split, let Davis go. Ask him to come up outside and tell him. You want this other lad without Davis knowing? Yeah. Mm, that might help. Okay, I'll see you later, then, huh? Yeah, Davis getting up. Uh, wait till he gets out. Okay. You just about finished with that drill? Yeah, I guess so. Why? I'd like to talk to you. Who are you? Police officers. Oh, that's so? Yeah. What do you want to talk to me about, officer? Uh, we'll tell you on the way downtown. Why not here? It's better downtown. Okay, but let me buy a drink first. No, thanks. Well, how about buy myself one? Some other time. You got something on your mind that won't wait? That's right. Well, what is it? Well, we'll tell you on the way downtown. Okay. My car's parked around the corner on uh, Sedgwick Street. I will take ours. Be glad to run you down there. We'll take ours. to leave my car there, officer. It's a two-hour parking zone. I'm glad we'll get a ticket. Let it body in. Well, sure. I never got a ticket in my life. Maybe I did get one now. Yeah. All right. I'll be back. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have me drive you down? Get in. Well, you say so. You ever hear of Boots Krakow? Krakow? Krakow. I didn't I read something in the paper about him, uh, Heard it, gangster or something? That all you know about him? What else could I know? They're asking you. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? The murder of some gangster? That's right. Well, I don't think gangsters are murder any more than you do, officer, but I'm sure I can't help you out there. You better change your mind before you get downtown. Why's that? Unless you can clean it up for us, we're booking you on suspicion of homicide. Are you serious? That's right. <laughs> Jaffe's tip and the fact Wall Shake was drinking with Lou Davis, huh? That's it, though. Well, you're doing just great. Yeah. Well, work it out best you can, then. Okay. I'll keep you posted. Okay, then. All right, let's try it again, Rudy. What's your tie-in with Lou Davis and Fred Shetty? Now, honest, Sergeant, it's just like I told you all along. I don't know either of those guys. You don't think I'd lie to you, do you? Oh, heaven forbid. Okay, Rudy. You can go now. Oh, that's real nice of you, Lieutenant. Do you want to frame an innocent man? Yeah. I told you once I don't like gangsters or murder any more than you do. If I knew anything at all about this, this boots crack, I'll believe me, I tell you. It does over there, Rudy. You know, you've both been pretty decent about all this. If uh, you're around the Stratford Hotel any time, uh, well, look me up. I'd like to buy a couple of drinks. We'll keep it in mind. Lousy two-bit gun. I'd like to know. Corn. Yeah, man. Any word from Michelson? Uh, Attorney General's man at Hanford? Yeah. Nothing yet, then. Rudy Walchick's just leaving. Have Burton and Marzani pick him up downstairs and tail him. I want to be notified the minute he starts heading toward Hanford. Okay, then. Pretty optimistic. He's too smart to tip his mitt like that. Maybe. Yeah? Lieutenant Guthrie, Chappie. I just want you to spread a little word around town, Jaffe. Yeah? 
What's the rumble? We picked up Rudy Walchek for the Krakow job, then let him go, because he's got a copper on the guy who paid him for it. Hey, that on the level? How about it, Jaffe? Yeah, sure. You got a deal with that. Thanks. Mm, might work, then. Mm, you have to get a break somewhere down the line. Mm. Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Michelson, Ben. Oh, yes, Mike. Something doing? Oh, that depends. On what? You send a man by the name of Asher out here to Hanford? Mm, he might have turned up there. He was trailing New Davis, weren't he? He's here, all right. In the hospital. Somebody gunned him down. <laughs> Sit down, I'll get some drink. I know, thanks, Mike. Any idea how it happened? Well, the way I get it, Asher was walking down Main Street, probably still chilling Davis. Car pulled up alongside and someone went home. Yeah, must have had him spotted. That's the only way to figure. Yeah. How are you doing? Franchetti's in business all right. He's got two floors in the Hampton Hotel. Looks like he's holding open house where his gunman, bookie, and numbers like a general state. Mm -hmm. Another tape recorder over there? Yeah, I got a man in the hotel now trying to slip a couple of bugs in the franchise's rooms. I don't know what luck you'll have, huh? Has to be good, Mike. You got something in the phone? Should be a meeting up there in the next couple of days. Franchetti Davis and Woody Walshank. You expecting fireworks? Yeah, anything could happen. Up to and including murder. We'll get those bugs in somewhere. Okay, man. You know, Ben, we could be going to a lot of trouble for nothing. No way. Federal Immigration Department's working in Franchetti, too. A deportation rap. I might have settled for that a couple of hours ago, but not now. Sit here eating Charlie's beef stew. Well, these things take time, man. Uh, Asher was lucky. He's still alive. The night's cop might not be. Mm. They're looking for you, bud. Right? Oh, what's up, Carl? Uh, Burton just called. It looks like Rudy Walchek's on his way to Hanford. Come on. I'm going to make a call. Yeah, sure. Uh, is Johnny still tuning, Walchek? Yeah. Burton's in the drugstore waiting for a call right now. Uh -huh. You, uh, want Walchek picked up? Not yet, no. Operator. Uh, get me Hanford 6621, please. Hanford 6621. Mm, that's right. What is your number, please? Uh, E3349. National 3349. Thank you. One moment, please. I don't want Walsh picked up until he gets back to his apartment in town. Then I want two minutes signed to a permanent stakeout there. I'll set it up, my friend. Deposit 15 cents for the first three minutes, please. Uh, you got him, Nicole Payne? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Who do you think will show it while she's been? Oh, probably Lou Davis. Yes? Uh, ben Guthrie, Mike. Those bugs in working order? They're working fine, Ben. Wall check on his way out. Yeah, looks like it. We'll get it down. Now, look, the pan's out. We want the stuff down here fast. You don't have it. French Eddie, too. Is that all? That's it. See you later, Ben. Michael Salas, sir? Yeah. Well, things could break fast when you get back to the office. Uh, no hurry. I haven't had my dessert yet. I thought you'd get your appetite back. <laughs> Just take care of that. Uh, I don't know, Ben. 
things have moved pretty fast. We waited long enough for him to get me. Yeah, that's true. Try to help, Jerry. You're not going to get away with this, Lieutenant. You know that, don't you? Sit down, French, Jerry. You got no authority to make arrests in Hanford. We didn't pick you up there. Attorney General's office did. I don't care who did. You can't knock me around like some ordinary bum. Yeah, yeah, I know, French Eddie. You've got friends, influence. You bet I have. By the time I get through, I'll turn this crummy police department of yours inside out. Sit down, French I'm not going to sit down any place. I'm walking right out of here. Sit down. <sighs> Send Sergeant Cargo in with the prisoner. You should have stayed out of town, French Eddie. It would have been safer for you. I mean, that's time to stay. Nobody like you is going to force me out. Not anymore, no. You'll be a guest here for a long time. All right, Rudy. Stick right in. Now, how's Lou Davis getting along, Sergeant? Lou? The doctors removed the slugs, Lieutenant. They think you live. Uh, what are you talking about? What's happened to Lou Davis? He got in the jam. What kind of a jam? Attempted homicide. On the person of Rudy Walchek here. You know our friend, Chetty. Mm-hmm. You, uh, talking about this man? That's right. I never saw him before, Lieutenant. Huh? What's this about Lou Davis? Mm, it's pretty simple. He was sent him to kill Rudy Walchek. And we stopped him. You can't go around throwing charges like that at me. Hey, start up that machine, man. Sure thing, man. Now, what's that? Tape recorder, friend, Chetty. What do you got on there? Here for yourself. To the town of town, what are you still doing? I like the town. Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carter was written by Sidney Marshall with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard McNear, Clayton Post, Hi Everback, Bob Sweeney, John McIntyre, Jeanette Nolan, Bill Conrad, and James McCallion. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Smoking, be considered.